Hi, this is Dr. Greg Campbell and welcome to our video here. Today we're going to be discussing uh, CEREC 4.0, the newest version that was released in the United States approximately eight weeks ago. We're going to go over all the way from administration, which is the beginning of the software, and take you all the way through margination. So it's going to be a fun video and we're going to just kind of show you all the ins and outs, give you little tricks along the way. So let's get started. All right, this is your start screen. When you first start up the program, we're going to go ahead and look at this. At the very top, you have phases, and we're going to slowly go through all of this, but your phase bar is going to tell you what phase you are in the whole process of going from A to Z here. Now, at the bottom, I love this, this is the step bar. It's going to give us our tasks that need to be completed during each phase. As we're bringing up new patients, you can show all patients when you're first getting started. You can add a new patient if they're not currently in the software, or if you have a bunch of patients already in, you can use this bar right here, select them by name or by the dentist. I'm going to put the patients the same way as last time. You need three of these filled out. First three is what we do, and the third one you'd see the birth date or the scan date. Once you're done here, we're going to go ahead and hit in add a new case. So when you click on add a new case, it's going to take you to what looks like a type it on. And I love these photorealistic elements for the new software. You're going to select a bridge or a single unit, select the tooth number, and then it's going to bring you to this screen. And I like this screen because it's going to ask you, what are you doing? Are you doing a full crown or inlay onlay? Remember, if you have any part of a cusp remaining, you have to call that an inlay onlay in our CEREC software. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select a crown that's highlighted in orange. We're going to click, select our design method, which is now individual copy or reference. So correlation is now called biogeneric copy. Okay, you're going to now follow the step bar at the bottom. If you have multiple milling chambers, which a lot of offices do, and then I'll select material. This is where a lot of people get in trouble. If you don't select, it's going to default to the Serona block. And then you have to go back at the milling phase and change it. So it's better to get it done right here. So you select on your material you're going to use, the product, and then you're going to click on the OK button. There we go. All right, so far so good. So make sure you select your material at that phase. It's gonna save you a lot of time. Then it takes you back to this. Make sure you have the right tooth, and then select another tooth if you wanna put it in. This is where you do multiple restorations, or you just click the double arrow, which we call the chevron, and we go forward. So now we're in the acquisition phase. Let's get imaging, which is what we like to do. This is so simple. In this phase, you're gonna automatically go down to the very bottom. Make sure that you take your images in the proper catalog. We now have upper arch, lower arch, and buccal bite instead of antagonist. It's gone and I'm so glad. All right, so when we're in this phase, we're gonna go ahead and our live camera is gonna show where we have our warmer down on our acquisition unit. Start with the most posterior image, put the crosshairs on there, go ahead and start capturing your images. Work your way toward the anterior, and on your last image, you're gonna roll that about 15 to 20 degrees to the buckle, which will aid in your buckle bite imaging. So just understand that you can turn the camera off and on by that little camera icon on the lower left. And look at that, you can still do manual capturing if you still are into doing that, or if you have a tough patient. All right, it's gonna take three to five images to make a complete quadrant model like this. And that's what you're gonna get, your last image. Please make sure you roll that to the buckle. That's a really nice trick. It helps with your buckle bite stitching where it gets that attached tissue. And last but not least, there's a very expensive mistake. Always make sure you lock the camera back in the holder. Okay, now we're going to do our buckle bite, which is absolutely fantastic. There's nothing new on here, except I just think it works better. I always stitch, believe it or not, the lower arch, even though I'm going to show you the upper arch first. Uh, I think the engineers in Germany prefer it that way, but I think it works either way very well. You're going to grab the blue, I'm sorry, grab the gray, bring it up, let go of it. It's going to grab it, then grab the gray, put it onto your lower arch, and you're going to get your stitching. This is an incredibly accurate way of doing your bite. Okay, so now we're going to our model phase. Okay, so right there, it shows you in your phase. Go ahead and you're gonna click that four button. Now, edit modeling is not necessary, and I really wanna tell you, stick to advanced users only on doing this. You can really get in a lot of trouble where you can blow part of your model out or it's not gonna seat fully because you've taken too much material away. But this is a good way to clean up a model uh, if need be or have a little slight imperfections. Uh, we'll go over a different video on how to use those later. All right. So a red line, the very bottom in your step menu is going to indicate a mandatory step. Okay, you, trimming is not mandatory, but we're just going to show you how to do it here. Uh, and I don't really trim too many models, to be honest with you, but I think it's important to know how to do it. It's just like margining, double click to start, single click to tack, double click to complete the line, which will remove part of the model. You can slow this video down and just kind of read as we're going here as well. Okay, if you get the ghost image like you did in the previous pass, double click on the ghost image. It's going to then correct it and bring that proper thing up. It's very important if you're trimming models to make sure the ghost image is gone. 
Drawing the margin, we got great enhancements with margination. I think it's even more accurate, if possible, than before. You double click to start, you have the auto, you have manual, and you have the high intensity, which works very, very well here. So once you've double clicked to end your margination, you're going to define your insertion axis. Very critical stage. Once you've lined it up in a mesial distal direction, you've got equal amounts of your contacts. That's going to help with your biogenic proposal. The proposals with this new software is, are fantastic. All right, now we're all set for the design phase. We're ready to go. Thanks for your time on this. I appreciate it. I'm Dr. Greg Campbell.